my kind of town. In a way. A creepy sort of way. Really, Paris? Hmm. I gotta find your sister right away. Did you check a room? Which one's her room? She shares a room with Carolyn. Room one night. I got a nice quiet room for two beds for $18. Got anything cheaper? I got singles for 12, but it's only got one bed. That'll do. You all gonna sleep piled up in one bed? Kids like to bunk on the floor. Don't you? Ma'am. Wouldn't your kids be more comfortable in their own bed? <laughs> These kids aren't mine. <laughs> They're my brothers. We're meeting him in Atlanta. He's been roughnecking out on an oil rig in the Gulf. I can't wait to get these kids off my hands. Room three, three, three.
Let's all crash his moon! Ah! Bombs. Go inside. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. Mario, Abby, just get your whiny butts inside. my heart medicine. A bit of wine a day keeps the doctor away. <laughs> it's fortified. Four and five? Shut up, Abby. You are so stupid. I am sick and tired of riding around with you little kids. Tonight, 
I am gonna ride around with a couple of grown-ups. Those boys and girls across the street look like they've got the right idea. Might as well get a little buzz going on. Save some cash at the bar. <sighs> I'll be entertaining on that bed tonight. Runts, you need to stay out of my way. Stinking kids, you give me a total migraine. There's no men in here. This is a dry hole. <laughs> men in here? These lights are killing me. Oh, this paper's not your sister. Neither Mario, no. turn off that light. I'm ready to be tied up, Betty Lou. Oh, boy rides. You know you're supposed to tie me up first. <laughs> Reva? Gizma? Yeah, Fur, can we come in? I don't know. What you want? You know. Bugs. I don't know, man. I guess I got some. Well, like, can we try a little? You've had your free sample. You know what it does. Yeah, but Cato has it. And he wants to try a little. Something for nothing, because he's a noob. This ain't no charity. You want bugs, you pay for bugs. That's how it's done? How many? Three. Two. Gives me you print in the front on both sides. Sorry, Ferd. One, I guess. Like, how do we know it's the real thing? You smoke it, you get off, it's the real thing! You put it in a real cigarette. Nobody said anything about cigarettes. I don't smoke. Well, you don't smoke, you don't get off! No. I guess I'll take it. It's just ground up bug powder, it's not illegal. How's it work anyway? Bed bugs secrete a venom. 
so they can bite you while you're asleep. Now that venom is narcotic. It keeps you from waking up. When you smoke it, the venom gets you high. Way high! <laughs> <laughs> No smoking in here. This is a no smoking room. No smoking. In here? <laughs> <laughs> Outside, all y'all! Yeah. <laughs> Idiots! Yeah. There are bed bugs in my room. Not my problem. It is your problem. Uh-uh. Carnivorous cooties are cutting me up while I sleep. They're making my sweat bloody. My sweat is valuable. People pay me for my sweat. Women use it as an aphrodisiac. I could spot you some bandages. I can't go to competition with bandages all over me. Those little vampires are gobbling up all my growth hormones. I've spent a fortune on my roids. Well, sounds to me like chicken would have been cheaper. Bugs are getting way bigger. I noticed that too. Bugs must be on steroids. Oh, legs are numb. Bed bug venom. You working on them bugs? Duh. Like I'm the only one around here doing anything. Just been so tired lately. Maybe we should skip to every other night. No can do. Bugs require a fresh supply of blood during their gestation cycle. Too bad that chicken idea didn't work. Now who'd have thought some little bugs could kill a full-grown chicken in one day? Drained it dry. And I can't pluck a chicken every day. That one pecked the jeepers out of me. Well, I guess we'll have to sacrifice a little to get this business rolling. Now, I read where some people used a cat. There's been no cats around here since that Korean restaurant opened up. Holy! We need to shave a cat! Well, getting pecked by a chicken is nothing. You just try shaving some old stray cat. Monsters here. I 
I know. They're in the walls. I'm afraid. I'll build a fort. They won't bother us there. Them people you read about in that magazine, how'd they shave their cat? Didn't say. Just said that they shaved the cat. And made it a nice bed where it would sleep and feed the bugs. What do not even look like a cat? Who oh, shave like that? I need to go to the bathroom. I'll check it out. It's okay. No monsters. Dab burn light. Don't worry, I'll protect you. Bugs are way bigger than yesterday. They are. They are. Well, better profit margin. You sure they're bed bugs? They're the real deal. Just means I'm doing it right. Sure are big. Go stretch out on the bed. Just for a little. Me too. Sleeping on that couch has me wasted. Oh, 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 oh,
me. It's all gone. I need to make a run for the door. Please don't go. I'm really fast. Just shine them with this. They're scared of the light. some strange guy to flee back motel like this? If this guy was any kind of a car dealer, he'd meet you at dealership. Just drop it, Colette. This guy's got something I want. Ladies. Miss, uh, Gray. I'm Doreen Gray. Nice to meet you. Al Sharko. I can see that. Okay. Well, let's see what you pretty ladies got here.
Ew. This looks like the honeymoon suite for orangutans. That's it? That's Marilyn Monroe's charm? Yep. That's it. It's just a rotten old piece of wood. Trust me. That's really it. What's that supposed to be? Well, its real name is Marie Antoinette's guillotine. Marionette's guillotine? You said you had that charm thingy that Marilyn Monroe used to get into Playboy. <laughs> she did use it for that. Would somebody please tell me what's going on? Your friend is trading a used car for something far more valuable. Something that can take her much further than that car ever could. This unique relic is all that's left of a guillotine that was used to execute a beautiful French queen in the city of Paris a long time ago. The dark stain on the wood is from where Marie Antoinette's blood gushed when the blade came down and lopped off her pretty little head. Since that time, a number of exquisitely beautiful women have worn this charm to give themselves an edge over all other women. This is what you're trading your car for? Some old stick of wood that's supposed to make you beautiful? It really does work. I know for a fact that Marilyn Monroe's charm was used by three Miss Global winners. <laughs> Marie Antoinette's guillotine is definitely what you need if you really do want to win a beauty pageant, sure. Uh, I really do want, but how do we know it's the real thing? Like, where did you get it? A reliable acquaintance of mine, Mr. Stumpy Nixon, acquired it from the Hughes Estate Collection shortly before it was up for auction. Well, we have to test it to make sure it's the real thing. Sure. Let's take it for a test drive. Uh, not on me. On her. Well, put it on Colette. Putting it on me wouldn't prove anything. Sure. Whatever you want. Right on the cut line. That's where it works the best. <laughs> oh, looks to me like that is exactly what you want. No doubt about it. Take it off. It, it's mine. to me right now. What's the hurry? <laughs> Take it off this instant! Hey, hey, cut it out! I'll get it! I'll get it! Here. You've got it now. This may seem like a deal as far as you're concerned, but I'm not so sure. Looks to me like I'm getting the short end of the stick. What do you mean, the short end of the stick? You called me wanting to trade it for the car I won fair and square in the SEC pageant. Problem here is that you misrepresented that car. You said it was in mint condition. I beg your pardon, Mr. Sharko. That car is in great condition, and you know it. Yeah, that car's in great condition. <laughs> well... Let's just say you're going to need something more than that old car to trade for this valuable item. How much more do you want? How about something a little special? Oh, definitely not. Why do men always have to act like men? <laughs> you just happen to be the first pageant girl I called. There's no doubt in my mind that there's someone else out there that would want this valuable merchandise more than you. <laughs> Wait! Wait! Uh, please, let, let me try it on. Just let me test drive it. Right on the cut line.
So, big guy. You were wanting a little something extra in this little beaver treat. Yeah, that'd be so nice. Mm, how'd you like a nice kiss? Love it. No, absolutely not. What's the big deal? Well, if you're going to do it, you've got to kiss him from across the table. Like, no hugging. I see what you mean. How about it, big guy? You want a little kiss from across the table? You okay now, big guy? Here are the keys to the car. See you later, alligator. See you later, alligator. <laughs> I think you could have told that guy to take the bus to Oregon and he would have done it. Mm, I think you're right. But he could snap out of it around Birmingham and come back looking for us. I'm going to report the car stolen anyway. I can collect the insurance and buy me a brand new luxury car. This old scrap of timber really doesn't look like much. I think it's how you position it. Here, let me try it on again and show you. Excuse me? I traded my car for this miracle charm. It stays with me. Well, you're gonna have to come up with a different gown. It's gonna look terribly out of place with that little shoulderless thing you picked out. I wonder if you always have to wear it on the cut line for it to work. Yeah. I wonder if everyone who's ever used it always wore this old thing around their neck. Maybe you can hold it in your hand. I'm not going to be able to walk around with it in my hand through the whole competition. You know, it seems a shame to only use something that powerful just to win a pageant. With your looks, you could probably win the contest anyways. I'm the one who could use a little help. Maybe when you're not using it to win beauty pageants, you could loan it to me once in a while. I don't think so. It's mine. And it's only meant for me and my needs. Well, you'd still be the owner and all. Forget it. You won't be using it at all. Not ever. You are such a self-centered prima donna. You know that's why everyone hates you. I'm beautiful. And everyone loves me. You even love me. You said so yourself. Let me tell you, I've done nothing but work and sacrifice to help you. How can you be so totally ungrateful? You wouldn't be anything without me. I didn't need your help then, and I don't need it now. I can do quite well without your help. You have always needed my help, Doreen. What have you ever done for me that I couldn't have done on my own? I wax all that monkey hair off your back and thighs every week. If it weren't for me, you'd be nothing but a curly-haired chimpanzee in a swimsuit. You cheap slut. You swore you'd keep my little hair problem buried forever. Looks like you're gonna need my help to keep this little secret buried too, Miss Monkey Girl. That little termite trap is stolen. And I'm sure the real owners would love to get it back. If you tell anyone, you'll be in just as much trouble as me. I don't think so. I'm not gonna be reporting my car stolen to collect the insurance money. I haven't done that yet! <sighs> I guess I could let you use the necklace every once in a while when I don't need it for something. Would you like to try it on again? Like right now? 
Right now? Sure. Here. Let me hook it on. delivery on your way home? I guess, Mr. Cassidy. It's just Cassidy, no mister. It's just this. I'll make you earn your delivery charge. I mean, as long as it's not too far out of the way, you know I live out past the big chicken. This guy lives in a motor court off Highway 41. Why doesn't this guy just come pick it up himself? He's a hermit. He's been shut up in his room for years. No one's ever seen him. No one? Four or five years ago, he called asking for the very same book. I took it over there. He paid cash. Good tip. Told me to leave it outside the door. I'll bet you I can get a look at him. Tell you what, you get a look at him, I'll double the delivery charge. You keep the tip either way. Hey, can I borrow those old crutches in the storeroom? Take them.
Bookhouse delivery. My crutch broke. I see. You poor thing. You've cut yourself. <clears throat> oh yeah. I guess I'm bleeding. Sorry. It's okay. It's really just a little cut. I'm Johnny. Johnny Ray. I'm David Jonas. But everybody just calls me Davy. Um, excuse me. Well, then excuse me, too. Uh, so, um, is, is your foot okay? It's fine. What's wrong with this foot, anyways? Nothing, really. Why the crutches? It was just an act to get you to open the door. Your little act didn't work out so well. You could have hurt yourself pulling a stunt like that. I really did hurt myself. I hope it was worth it. Got me in to see you. Well, yeah. Now you got a nasty cut. You might even get a black eye. You did all this, just to see me. Yeah, and to get a tip. A tip? A tip, is that really all you care about? Well, I had to try something. My boss said you don't open the door for anyone. That's true. I've stayed in here ever since I retired from the Navy. What did you do in the Navy? Um, submarine navigator. I love submarines, they're so cool. Um, my boat sank. Your submarine sank? And you survived? Half the crew survived. Submarines have at least two complete crews. Well, one crew is at sea on patrol, second crew is topside. I was in this room when the boat sank. I didn't find out until I showed up to duty at the base.
must have hit you pretty hard, losing all your friends. Yeah. After that, I came here and retired. Didn't want to be put with another crew. When did this happen? I'm not really sure. Seems like yesterday. <laughs> I guess I don't keep up with the days. I just stay on my regular shift. Your regular shift? On, on the boat, we use an 18 hour day. Each shift is six hours. Six hours on, six hours off, six hours in the rack. Well, what about the other six hours in the day? The Navy discovered that we don't need them. Some Mariners work better without all those extra hours. It sounds weird. It's actually not as weird as it sounds. In fact, it actually works pretty good. Between patrols, I always come back to this room and continue on 18 hour days. So does that nutty clock always run that fast? No. I thought the thing was broken and stopped running. Well, it's really going now. claustrophobic being cooped up here all the time. Well, I like being cooped up. Time stops when I'm on patrol. We're pulling the port, the hatch opens up, and it's always the big jolt. What jolt? Um, I hated getting back and finding out about all the things that happened in the world while we were down. Married men getting off the boat expecting to see their wives and discovering they're now divorced. Did that ever happen to you? My fiance died while we were on patrol. When we tied up, she had been buried for 63 days. Davy, I'm so sorry. It was... So strange. As far as I was concerned, she just died. Everybody topside already got over it and moved on with their lives. Uh, that's when I, uh, that's when I started staying in here. And the sub, I don't think about things on the surface. You don't get any news while you're underwater? Nope. The only messages the boat receives are if we need to nuke somebody or destroy the world. The captain and XO are the only ones who read the messages. Total isolation. <clears throat> I just read my book. I don't want to know what's happening in the world. As long as I'm in the submarine, the world doesn't change. I guess not. Nobody in it but you. You're a coward, you know. You're really just afraid of falling in love and being loved.
I guess I was afraid of falling in love. But now, I think I wouldn't mind. No, you don't, Mr. Jonas. We're not falling in love. I mean, how can you even expect me to be in love with a, a hermit who never leaves his little motel room? I can change by simply walking out that door. Haven't you noticed what's happening to you? What's happening to this room? Do you seem to have gotten uh, grayer? You've stopped time somehow. Time doesn't move. Time doesn't move. It's moving now. I mean, it might not be that easy to just walk out that door. You can stay here with me. This room is falling apart. We, we can easily build you an extra bunk and, and, and you don't look like you eat all that much. It, it wouldn't work. I mean, I can't live like a hermit reading the same book every single day. And besides, I eat more than you think I do. Johnny! I can change. I need to leave this room. Looks like time's already catching up to me. I don't know about this. Everyone lives on borrowed time. We closed the door before it's too late! Hold that. Ah! When are you gonna get the truck lid fist on our car? I might never get it fixed. And it's not our car, it's my car. And I may just buy a whole new ride after this deal. Recycle the old lead sled back into the system from whence it came. You know, you could always just let me have it. I like to sweeten up my end of the deal a little bit. You got to learn to live within your means, T. That old rust bucket still gets by under its own power, which makes it worth at least a hundred bucks. I ain't just gonna give it away. Oh, well, 
Well, remember, you promised me 100 bucks to watch your back. Yeah, I won't forget. I don't miss any details. Yeah, you'll forget if it suits you. I won't forget your $100. Ryan shotgun for you isn't the safest activity I can think of. Look, T, I've already done all the dirty work. I located the goods and done the breaking and entering. I acquired the merchandise and made the getaway. All you gotta do is be around during the transaction so the buyer doesn't get any funny ideas. Oh, so that's the merchandise. An old box. It's not the box, you welter brain. It's what's in the box. What's in the box? Houdini's hand. Say what? Houdini's hand. Oh! It's Houdini's old mummified hand. You mean like there's a real dead guy's hand in there? Like, from that old dead magician? Yeah, somebody cut it off his body after he died. Well, so what? I mean, who do you want some old dead thing like that? Lots of people. Oh, lots. And what would they do with it? It's got uses. Huh? What kind of uses? Like, what uses? It's dead. I tell you, I stole it off of Stumpy Nixon. You mean the one on Burglar Down in Atlanta? You stole that dead hand from Stumpy Nixon? Yep, sure did. See, he left it in his flat when he went to go visit his girlfriend. So when I go pay him a visit, I realize he's left his door unlocked. So I just pop in and lift it. <laughs> he even left a bag for me to carry it off with. You stole that hand off of a one-armed burglar. Yeah, I guess I left him a little short-handed. <laughs> <laughs> What was stumping this using that dead hand for? Well, I heard he was using it to unlock doors and safes and stuff. I'm telling you, this thing is valuable to the right people. How does he do it? You know, like, how does Stumpy Nixon using an old dead hand to open doors and safes? Man, I don't know. He just does. He inherited it from some other old dude that was using it for the same thing. Somehow they use it. Have you seen it? What, the hand? Yes, the hand. Have you seen the hand? No, I haven't seen it. It's in a Chinese trickster box. You gotta slide a panel this way and that way. It, it's like a puzzle. Nah, 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 nah. It's an ancient combination lock. I used to try to figure these things out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna call my fence Al Sharko. Man, this thing is worth 10K easy. Yeah, yeah. Sharko's Body Shop. Hey Al, it's Rufus. How's it going? What do you want, Rufus? I'm here with my mother. <laughs> Tell your mama said hi. My mother despises vermin like you. What do you want? Man, your mama's hard. Listen, I got something you want. I doubt it. Really, Al? I managed to get my hands on something quite valuable. Are you gonna tell me what it is before I die of old age? Check this out. I have, in my possession, Houdini's hand. Are you talking about that thing that Stumpy Nixon uses to open safes and stuff? Yeah, picked it up right out of his flat. Check this out. Stumpy Nixon left his door unlocked. Stumpy Nixon always leaves his door unlocked. It'd be a waste of time to lock his doors with that hand thing in there. That's what I'm trying to tell you, Al. This thing opens stuff. I figured you might know someone who wants it. Stumpy Nixon might want it, and you'll be lucky if he takes it back without a lot of trouble. Man, I ain't afraid of that one-armed safecracker. Well, you better be plenty worried. Nobody messes with Stumpy Nixon. Even the cops leave that guy alone. A couple years ago, a detective got on his trail. 
he woke up one morning with his nose lopped off. Only a complete imbecile like you would steal Stumpy Nixon's hand. Yo, T, how'd you open the box? You know the bathroom doesn't have any toilet paper? Left me stranded, high and dry. The box, T, how'd you open it? Didn't touch it. I was in the bathroom while you were talking to Al. What's that stuff in the box? Doesn't look like a hand to me. Looks like rock salt. Yeah, it's exactly what it is. It's rock salt. They put it in there to preserve the hand. Yep, that's rock salt. Man, get that trash can so we can put this in there. No hand. There isn't anything in that box but rock salt. Change your mind? You got my hand. Well, did uh, Al Sharko call you? No, Al Sharko didn't call. You were trying to sell it to Al, weren't you? Well, uh... You thought you could just steal my hand and sell it, didn't you? Well, to be perfectly honest with you, Stumpy... That's Mr. Nixon to you. You've never been perfectly honest with anyone in your whole miserable life. You got my hand, and I want it back, with interest. Okay, Mr. Nixon. I have what you're looking for. What's it worth to you? What's it worth to me? <laughs> to be perfectly honest with you, <laughs> I tell you what is worth to you. The way I see it, you took my hand. I want my hand back, and now I want one of yours. What? <laughs> my hand? You're crazy! You guys better seriously consider my offer. And remember, I want my hand back, and I want one of yours in interest. And listen, Rufus, I'm on my way over there to get it. Who was that? Was that Stumpy Nixon? What do you want? My hand. Says he wants my hand in interest for taking his. How does he expect you to do that? Throw off your own hand? I guess so. <sighs> You think the hand did that? I don't know. You know it's out that box. And it's in this room somewhere. Uh, I don't know, T. I don't think it can do something like that. It's in here. It's just turned on. That TV, it's in here, you know. Come over here and help me move this out so we can look behind it. Nah, nah, I'm good. Don't be a wuss. Get over here. Come on. Ready? On three. Uh -huh. One, two, three. <coughs> Don't pick up your end or anything. Nothing back there but old dust bunny the size of cats. <laughs> Tyrone Thaddeus. So you're watching Rufus's back for a measly hundred bucks? Yeah. How'd you know that? I know a lot, Tyrone. I know that after Rufus get through settling up with me, he's not going to have your measly hundred bucks. Rufus is the one who's going to come up uh, shorthanded. Ah! <laughs> <laughs>
Hey, Rufus! That hand just locked us in! Man, get out the way! <clears throat> Move! Get out the way! How'd I do that? The window. The window's all boarded up! How are we gonna get out now? We got a bag full of tools. In case you forget, remember, we break into places for a living. Oh, yeah! yeah. We can get out of here. Yeah. Alright, let's go! Hey, Rufus, where's your crowbar? I lost it. It fell off the roof of the Piggly Wiggly back in the green room. And you never got another one? Never needed another one. Till now? Yeah, till now. Hey! Hey! I know you hear me. When you shites go stop messing around, you need to get that hand ready for me because I'm on my way over there to get it. Okay. Hey, Rufus, what you gonna do with that saw? Hope you're not thinking what I think you're thinking. No, I'm not thinking what you think I'm thinking. I know one thing, we need to figure out a way to get out of this room before... The hand is hanging around this table. Tyrone. 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 I know you hear me, boy. Is that you, boy? Yes, this is I. I've got some good news, Tyrone. And I got some bad news. <laughs> the good news is, I don't have my heart set on taking Rufus's hand. That is some good news. Yep, and the bad news is, your hand will also be satisfactory. <laughs> oh, 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 why my hand? Well, any hand will do, as long as you crooks come off with an hand. You're just fortunate I don't want your arm or your leg. <laughs> We've got to get out of here. Looks like they screwed these boys on. They're not prying off. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh! Oh! <coughs> Come here! <coughs> Rufus! You nearly died! You peed your pants and you nearly died! It's that hand! It's trying to kill us! It is! It is! <coughs> It just went back in this box! Get, go, get close the lid! You move out of the way! Ah. Get something out of this bag! Anything! What can we use? I can't find anything! We need a hand for when Stumpy gets here. Yeah, we do. I see you had a run in with my hand. Uh huh. Tell me, Tyrone, what did you learn from all of this? Don't mess around with Stumpy Nits. Let me give you a little bit of advice, Tyrone. Hanging out with big dummies like Rufus right there? You gonna end up just like Rufus. Hey, hey, Mr. Nits! What you want me to do with this? Ah, uh, yes, the interest of my property. I don't think I'll be taking that today. 
It's not my color. Plus, it smells bad. <laughs> Ho! Stumpy Nixon, you better tell somebody. <laughs>